personal finance practice problem using Excel. Future value calculation using monthly periods. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. Note that we're down here in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. We have the information of an investment at 50000 The rate of return, 36%. We're going to say that's a yearly rate for the years, two years, but we're going to be compounded monthly. So in other words, the question is, where will we stand in the future if we have an initial investment of the 15000 of the 50000 rate of return, 36,000% per year, and it's going to be for two years, but we're going to be compounding monthly. Note that the 36% will make more sense as to why we chose it when we look at the limitations of the tables when you're using kind of that format of calculations. So we're going to be looking at our future value type of calculation. There's a couple different ways we can do this. Sometimes this is a type of problem where it's kind of easiest oftentimes to just run the table and think about where we will be in the future as we do a running balance type of calculation. So let's start off with that this time. Note that we have two years. We're not going to be compounding yearly, but rather monthly. So that means the number of periods is going to be equal to two times 12 or 24 periods. Obviously, when we compound monthly, we have a whole lot more periods. So when we do a running balance, it could be somewhat more tedious. But when doing it in Excel, not really a problem because we can just copy and down and use our autofill type of calculations to do so. So let's do that first. I'm going to start with period 0, 1, and then select those two periods. Put our cursor on the fill handle, drag it on down to 24 periods. And then let's center that home tab, alignment and center. Then we're going to have our initial investment, which is going to be equal to the 50000 Then we'll do our calculation with the interest, or it could just be the increase. Let's call it for whatever type of investment we have at that 36%, which is probably not interest if we got 36%. But in any case, this is going to be equal to the 50000 And then we're going to say times the 36%. But that's the yearly rate, so when we go to the monthly, we have to divide that by 12. That's going to be the new thing that we're taking a look at, so we're at that 1,500, which is our darn good monthly return, typically. So let's see how we can calculate that a couple different ways. Note, you can take the 50,000. You can then multiply times 0.36. That would give you the yearly return, and then divide it by 12 to get that 1,500. Or you can take the 0.36 divided by 12 to get the monthly rate which would be 3%, which is nice and even, which is the reason we chose 36%, because that 3% is something that we can easily look up on a table, even though we're looking at monthly rates. Then you could take that and multiply it times the 50, and that'll give you once again that 1,500. Let's do this a couple times. This is going to be equal to the 50,000 plus the 1,500. That's going to increase the investment to 51,5. Let's do it a couple more times, and then we'll do the auto fill. This is going to be the 51.5 times the 36% divided by 12. That's the new thing. And then this is going to equal the 51.5 plus the 1,545 gives us the 53.45. Let's do it a couple more times. This equals the 53.45 times the 36%, then divided by 2 to get us the monthly percent or monthly amount, however you want to think about it. This equals the 53,045 plus the 1,591, giving us the 54,636. Let's do it one more time. This is going to be equal to 54,636 times the 36% divided by 12, giving us the 1,639. Now we have the balance of the 54,636 plus the 1,639 for the 56,275. Let's do it again, keep it in mind and setting it up as we go so that we can autofill it down, adding absolute references when necessary. I'm going to delete what we've done so far. Really? You're going to delete it? You're going to, yeah, I'm going to do, don't, that's, uh, uh, undo. No, we're going to do it again here. We're going to, and we're going to think about basically autofill when we do it this time. This is going to be equal to the 50,000 times the 36%. Now that is outside the table, so that's typically something that we want not to move down when we copy it down. So we're going to use the absolute reference, which is F4 on the keyboard or dollar sign before the B and 3. 
you only need a mixed reference, but an absolute one works. And then we need to divide that by 12. The 12 is a hard-coded or typed-in number, therefore it'll copy down as we go to. So then this is going to be equal to the 50,000 plus the 1,500. Although this is a more complex calculation, nothing is outside the table. Both of those cells we want to move down relative when we copy it down. Therefore, no absolute references necessary here. We're then going to select those two cells, put our cursor on the fill handle, left click on it, and drag it on down 24 periods to get to the 101.640 about. So there's that. Let's do it again. Let's do it this time. Let's do it with the future value calculation in terms of an Excel worksheet formula or function. This is probably the two ways that we would do this most commonly in practice. And then we'll move on to the table and the mathematical formula, two ways that you might do this in a school type setting more likely. Let's go ahead and hide some cells first. I'm going to put my cursor on C, even though it's really skinny over here. And then scroll on over to F, let go, right click the selected area and hide those items. And then we'll do our calculation here. I'm going to do it more quickly than in the past because we've seen these in the past, but I'll kind of emphasize the new area. So I'm going to say negative future value, shift nine. This is all the same, but then the rate is that 36%. And we got to divide that by 12 because we're looking for the monthly rate. So divided by 12, that's the new thing, comma, number of periods would be two years if compounded yearly, but now 24, two times 12, which we already have down here. So I'm just gonna pick up the 24, comma. This is not an annuity, so we don't have a payment. So two commas, that brings us to the present value, which is at the 50,000 and enter. So there's our 101, 640 again. We can also, of course, do that with the tables. So we can say that uh, we have the tables, which is the payment, let's say, which is gonna be the 50,000. When we look at the tables, then we're not looking at the, the year, the periods no longer represent years to us. They have to represent months and the percentages need to represent then the related monthly percents, not yearly percents. We're given the yearly percent. So we'd have to take that and divide by uh, 12. So if we take 36 divided by 12, we would get three. So the monthly percent is three which you can see kind of why we choose that percent if we're working on a book problem where we're forced to use tables, because if I use a percent that's uneven or less than one, then we're gonna have a problem with the tables. So remember, if you're in a school setting where they're gonna force you to use tables, they will often be limited in, in these ways and you can kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of working through the problems. So we got three and then we're also limited to the number of periods. The table only goes down to 50, period. So we got two years here, which in months would be 24, which is still pretty far down on the table, even though it's only two years. So 24 and then three on the percent is going to give us that 2.0328. So 2.0328, 2.0328. Adding some decimals, home tab number group, a couple decimals or four of them. This is the amount from the table underlining that home tab fonts group and underline and that's going to give us then our, our amounts which we'll call future value let's say this equals the 50 times that 2.0328 for about 101 640 let's add a couple pennies home tab number a couple pennies and it's even there now let's do it again this time with the with the mathematical formula pointing out the differences here if we were to do a mathematical formula such as this for the future value, let's hide a few cells. Hiding this cell, I can't see what it is, but that skinny cell on over to I, I'll let go and right click and we'll do this again. Don't delete it, hide it, hide it. And then we got the future value equals the present value, which would be the 50,000 times one plus the rate. The rate would be the 36 divided by 12 or three to the number of periods, which would be two years times 12 or 24. Those would be the major changes as you plug it into your algebraic equation, which we will do in the form of a uh, mat of a table up top. So we're gonna say, we'll start off with the present value in a similar way as we've seen with prior presentations at the 50,000. And then we're gonna say that we have the sub calculation, which is going to be the one plus the uh, rate to the n periods. So we're going to pull that into the inside, which is one. The rate is going to be equal to the 36, but we got to divide that by 12. This is the new thing. That's the new thing here. 
home tab number percentifying that gives us a nice even three which is not likely to happen oftentimes when you're really doing that in real life because you won't have a nice even percent but we're going to go to the home tab font group and underline let's give a subtote here which is going to be or i'll just call it one plus the rate which is our subtotal equals the sum sum of those two numbers making that a percent home tab numbers we could add a couple decimals 1.03 or make it a percent 103 percent when we do and that'll then be taken to the number of n periods n periods periods da -da. so this is going to be not two years but 24 periods because we have monthly periods now that's one of the new things home tab fonts group and underline and then that's going to give us we'll call it the one plus the rate shift to the shift six periods of n periods and we'll put that into the outside this equals the 103 percent shift six carat to 24 periods adding a couple decimals home tab numbers decimalizing that cell font group underline and that'll give us our future value let's call it the future value future value which is going to be equal then to the 50,000 times the 2.032 and so on gives us our 101640 adding a couple decimals there home tab number group couple decimals and make it a little wider so it can handle the decimals that are added there we go let's do some indentation selecting these cells and let's indent them alignment and indent alignment group indent and then alignment group and indent. Okay, so now let's unhide some cells, put in our cursor from B to K, so we can see what we've done thus far. B to K, let go, right click and unhide. So now we had our we had our running balance getting us to the 101, 640. We had our 101, 640 with our, our Excel formula, which we can add a couple pennies to if we want. Number group, couple pennies, 101, uh, 639.71 and then we got 101.640 on the tables due to rounding from the tables and then we've got the 101.639.71 uh, also with the uh, Excel with the mathematical formula I'm going to delete this up top and this number right here from the tables is rounded to four digits you can see it matching up to this number here which is actually longer than four digits which is the result or the cause of the slight difference here for rounding.